What is up, beautiful people? Thank you for tuning in. This is Matt Ramage Show. Happy Hump Day, you know what I mean? But uh, with every show presented by the greatest gas station in the world, that is Quick Trip, and they're giving away chicken for life. It ends this month, but sh- be sure you're using the Quick Rewards app and check out all the stuff that you can do on there, you know what I mean? Uh, I know that uh, Quick Trip and Nick Lay Law were linking up, giving away free gas, you know what I mean? Nick Lay Law is another sponsor of the show. So be sure, you know, show some love to Quick Trip. Show some love to Nick Lay Law. They're doing some great things, giving away some free stuff, you know what I mean? So big shout out to them, you know what I mean? But uh, how is everyone doing tonight, you know what I mean? I'm off tomorrow, you know, so it's kind of like my Friday, my Saturday. I don't know how you see that, but uh, I'm off to tomorrow, so I'm doing a little bit of drinking, you know what I mean? And uh, ch- check this out. I got some uh, Charlie Barron's Old Fashioned Brandy. All right, Charlie Barron's has his own brand of brandy that is out, dude. And uh, I just got this in the mail today. Uh, you know, Charlie Barron's, you know, king of Wisconsin. You know what I mean? Uh, he, he got some brandy. I think later on in the show, I will do a little review on this and like see what we're working with. I got my glass right here. We're all ready to go. But let's talk about some Packers first. You know, we got some stuff going on. Um, the Packers are playing in Brazil week one of this NFL season. Um, I think it's going to be, you know, I, th- I think it's going to be interesting. We will see like how it goes. I know a lot of people have a lot of opinions on this. I'm not mad about it for sure because like it's an away game, whatever. We'll get into this thing. But hammer the comment section. What do you guys want to talk about? We're definitely going to get into the Packers playing in Brazil. Then we'll crack open uh, Charlie Barron's uh, brandy over here. Actually, I already got it open pre-open because uh, I want to make sure it's ready to go. You know what I mean? But uh, there we go. You know what I mean? What is up, Rick? How you doing? He said, what's up, Matt? Uh, also, before we k- kick into the Packers stuff, I want to, for the people who listen to my podcast on the audio version, I want to know, like, do people want this, these live streams on the podcast? Because sometimes they're not all, you know, audio. It's like video, whatever. We're just talking. But um, if people want these audio versions, like these uh, live streams on the podcast, let me know. People who can't watch, you know, they want to listen. People are listening maybe on this one. Uh, I'll probably post this on a podcast. But anyways, let me know. Tweet me, Facebook, whatever. But um, let's talk about this. Uh, the Packers are playing in Brazil uh, week one. Friday night, it sounds like uh, it's going to be um, it's going to be an away game for the Packers. The Packers do not lose um, a home game. So, like, a lot of the people who are commenting, who, like, I saw complaining about it, like, they're talking about, you know, it's, it's going to be on Peacock unless you're in, like, uh, the Eagles area or the Packers, you know, Wisconsin or Philly. Uh, but I, it's five bucks on Peacock. You know what I mean? Like, I, I get, like, people are mad because, like, uh, streaming services, that's how the NFL is going. But, dude, that's just how it is. That's just how it is. It's five bucks. I already have Peacock because I watch Office. You know what I mean? But um, I feel like it's not it's not that big of a deal. I get the frustration because that's, you know, you got to get all these streaming services. You know, as, as soon it'll be Netflix, it'll be everyone, and then you have to get all these different streaming services. But um, I don't know, Peacock. I I really don't have a problem with it. Plus, I'm local, so I'll get to watch it anyways. All right, let's get to some comments over here. Uh, Silent Report says, "Yo, what's up, Matt? Hope you're having a great night, bro. What are your thoughts on a Friday night game? Friday night game? I'm actually, you know, I think it's kind of cool. Um." Like, I know, like, from a fan's perspective and the player's perspective, it's different because, you know, the, the, the flight over there and everything. But I feel like the players are probably going to be pretty excited about it, too. But uh, I think a Friday night game is good uh, for the Packers because it's beginning of the season. Um, they'll get home before, like, the Sunday games. So they'll have time to, like, readjust their bodies and all that stuff. So I think a Friday night game will be fun, you know. I'll be live streaming it, you know, not the game, but I'll be live live that night during the game doing a little watch party situation. But um, I think it's going to be – I'm excited. Um, I actually didn't think that they were going to get the game. I thought that they were going to go away from the Packers. But, uh, you know, Brazil, Packer fans, dude, there's a lot of Packer fans over there. Um, I just know from, like, the comments I've never been there. But, like, like from the social media, like, there, there's a, a lot of people over there that people don't even realize how many fans – that the Packers have over there. Cause I, you know, someone was saying too, that like their, their national flag is green and yellow, kind of the same colors. That's kind of how they draw to the Packers. I'm not sure if, if that's what it is, but um, I know that there's a lot of fans over there. I think uh, before the season starts, I'm going to try to get someone from Brazil, like a sports person that kind of knows what's going on over there. And uh, kind of like say, like talk about like what it means to have the Packers play in Brazil. Uh, I actually like it because they'll have more time 
uh, in between their first and second game. Exactly what I just said, uh, saw that report. Uh, that's exactly it. They're, being a Friday game, they're going to have enough time to come back. Um, it's not going to be like a huge like inconvenience. It's not going to – I mean, it's better than like if it was in the middle of the season. All right, They don't got to use a bye week for it. They uh, get it on, you know, right away in week one. They're going to be home by Sunday. I don't know when they'll get home. I don't even know how long the flight is. Like, I don't know. I'm not a geographer. You know what I mean? Um, but I know that it'll be a Friday night game. I th- I, th- I think it's going to be cool. I'm excited about it. And I, I think it's cool for the people of Brazil, like the Packer fans over there. I know a lot of people in America are like are upset about it. I don't really don't get why you're upset that much. If It's an away game. So, like, unless you live in Philly and you're like, we're, we're, we're looking forward to going to that game. Like, you weren't going to go to the game anyways. Like, why does it matter, like, where it is? You know what I mean? Like, it's not like you don't have to get up early. It's not a Sunday morning at, like, 9 in the morning. It's uh, it's going to be a Friday night game. I think it's going to be cool. I can see the players having a, you know, not all the players loving it, but I think some of the players don't think it's cool. Like, go to Brazil. You know what I mean? Not like they're going to go sightseeing or anything or, you know, go hang out. But um, it's a business trip. But um, I, I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. Let's keep it moving over here. Uh, Cody says, little off football, but. Uh, today was my first day as a probation parole officer. Big shout out to Cody. All right, got the new got the new job over there. Uh, you are a probation parole officer. Hopefully, I never need your services. You know, so far so good. But uh, yeah, big shout out to Cody. Huh? Congratulations on the job. And uh, be nice. You know what I mean. <laughs> Hope you're good at your job. You're gonna kill it. Uh, Donnie said, "What's up, Matt? Hope you're doing well. Go pack, go. Excited for this season." We got a hell of a team already. I can't wait to see how we improve even more. Love uh, Sweat's comment on Green Bay. Can't wait to crush the Bears again. Dude, let's talk about that for just a quick second. I, I Great comment, Donnie. I appreciate it. Um, we're talking about the Bears because we, we, we talk about – I should have had that video up, but people who follow me uh, saw like what I had to say about that, about, about his comment. Uh, all right, I didn't mean to bring that up. What am I doing here? the comments on the screen but um the thing is is like it's funny because like bears players will talk about the packers right during the offseason on podcast packer players don't do that you don't see preston smith like i say i made a video about this so i'm not going to get too in deep with it because people kind of know what i think but uh you don't see preston smith you don't see different players talking about the bears because the bear the packers own the bears right so the bears players their fan base especially dude the bears fan base has got so progressively annoying, it's ridiculous. Like, I always gave props to Bear fans. I talk trash because I'm a Packer fan. I hate the Bears. But I always got along with most of the Bears fans that I interacted with on social media and whatnot. I mean, and I still do because there's some really good ones that I, I've known for a bit. But, like, dude, I, I, I think those guys are probably embarrassed by what a lot of Bear fans are putting out there. You got Viking vibes. like, And you actually, like, pass Viking vibes. Like, this offseason chatter. Oh, we're going to take over the North. Dude, shut up. You're not taking over the North. You're not taking over nothing. And then when I talk about the Bears, like, oh, we're rent-free in your head. We're rent Dude, your players are talking about my team. And, and, and when Caleb Williams gets drafted, when they have him at the press conference, that's what he's going to say. We're going to beat the Packers. That's what he'll say. No coach, no player has ever, on their introductory like press conference, has mentioned the Bears. But everyone mentioned the Packers. Every coach, every top-notch player, that's the goal. Beat the Packers. The Packers' goal, win the Super Bowl. That's the difference. You know what I mean? I respect the Bears as a franchise because, like, uh, the, the history and, like, all that. They're old, you know, one of those throwback teams, and, like, they deserve that respect as a franchise. But they ran their franchise to the ground. Their fan base is insane. Their players are insane. Uh, they're, like, they got the little – Little stepbrother, not even little brother, little stepbrother syndrome. All they can talk about is, is the Packers. But then when I talk about the Bears and start throwing a little shade, people are like, all you do is talk about the Bears. Shut up. <laughs> like, I'm going to trash the Bears. That's what I do. That is, like, uh, how I started doing Packers content on social media is just trashing the Bears. And then people, like, follow me now, and they're like, oh, you know, this is what this is what I've always been doing. I'm a Packer fan. I trash the Bears. I hate the Bears. And but I, I feel like the Bears are embarrassing themselves. Like the players are embarrassing themselves. Always talking about the Packers. Like they thought it was done because Aaron Rodgers left. Jordan Love comes in first game of his career. You know, uh, uh, as a starting quarterback, and uh, you know they win. You know, Jordan Love had more passing yards 
in his first year starting than any quarterback in the Bears history. Like the Bears and the Packers franchise, we are not the same, bro. We are not the same. The Packers absolutely own the Bears. Uh, they've been throttling for a long time since the 90s. Uh, Bears fans can't handle it. I get it. You're trying to cope. I, I see Bears fans mention the Niners. Like, oh, you can't beat the Niners, though. Like, how are you, as a Bears fan, pumping up the Niners? Like, how bad is your team that you have to start riding another team? I would never do that. I would never be in an argument with whatever team. And be like, yeah, well, you can't beat that team. I would never, like, jump on some other team's coattails and be like, in an argument. Like, I, I'm, I'm always just going for my team. I'm not... I'm not, I'm not, not to say that they're bandwagon because they're not like being a fan of that team, but they're like, how I, I would never do that. I don't know. I see so many Bears fans do it. Viking fans do it too. They just bring up the Niners. Like, bro, unless you're a Niner fan, shut up about the Niners. I get it. The Niners got it. So, like, when Niner fans chirp in, I don't even take Niner fans that serious because they, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Go on. This This will be a rant podcast, just trashing every team I hate. But the, the Niner fans, I don't even take them that serious. But especially when Niner fans and Bears fans and Viking fans talk about the Packers losing the Niners, what happens to the Niners the next game every time? They lose. So, like, if, if, if the Niners were winning, beating the Packers and going on to win the Super Bowl, I get it. Flex on it. But, like, they're not. They lose the next week. You know what I mean? But, um, anyways, Bear fans are horrible. Let, let's check in with Donnie over here. He's got a comment. Oh, uh, well, I think I already got that one, actually. We got another comment over here uh, from someone from Brazil, I believe. Brazil? Is cheesehead. This is a home game for Packers. Go pack go. So uh let me ask you while you're watching, if you're still here, um, like how awesome is it? Because like I, I've seen a lot of people, I follow a lot of different stuff on Twitter, uh, a lot of Brazil fans I I was seeing comment, and like it's just like uh such a huge thing, you know, for to have your favorite team come to your country. I think I think it's huge for Brazil, and I definitely want to try to get someone. Uh, come on the podcast from Brazil or from that area and kind of talk about like what it is and what it's going to be and how it affects that community and how it affects the fan base and all that. I, I, I think it's awesome. I think it's cool. All right, let's get it moving over here. Aaron says, go pack, go bears still suck in Vikings. <laughs> all right. What's up, Aaron? Appreciate it. Uh, the Lambo lounge. Yo, Matt, what's good. We are having a good time, you know, having a couple of drinks, talking about some green Bay Packers football. Uh, what's your opinion on the new kickoff rule and no hip drop tackles? See, so the hip drop tackle, I think, is stupid. The 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 new rule, that is stupid. I, I feel like it's, I, I feel like it's it's bad for the game. It, the, there's some rule changes that take place. You know, the the catch rule. You know, they were trying to do some stuff. Uh, lay hand the quarterback. You seen Clay Matthews get screwed on that. Uh, there was, you know, all those little rules. And they kind of get faded out. Not all of them, like completely, but like they come in so aggressive with it. So if they start coming in aggressive with the hip drop tackle and like there's just a regular tackle getting called a penalty, it's going to make the NFL really soft. I get like the whole injury thing. You got to protect the players. You know, they got, you know, lives after football. You don't want them, you know, in walkers at 56. But like, um, I don't know, the hip drop tackle, I feel like that. I feel like that can't be banned. You know what I mean? And as far as the kickoff, I actually am. I'm excited about the kickoff. I feel like it's going to create more kickoffs, you know, not as many out, out of the back of the end zone. Um, and you're not going to have guys running each other hundred miles an hour. So like that was their thing, the injury part of it. Right. And as a fan, like fans don't care. You know what I mean? And like, I, I, I care. I mean, cause they're humans, but like for the most part, fans are like oblivious. They're just like, uh, keep it the same. I get having to change because safety stuff, especially the kickoff, like the uh, risk reward, like guys are getting like absolutely slaughtered out there. So like, I get that. You got to clean that up. I like it. No one can move until the ball is caught. It's all, almost going to be like a, uh, like a run play. It seems like, right. So they're going to catch the ball. Everyone's going to start running at each other. They got blockers. I can see like a lot of teams trying to get slick with it, try to do some reverses, try to do, different stuff, uh, try to hand it, you know, kind of pitch stuff. I don't think they're going to get too crazy because, like, fumbles and stuff. But I could see some teams doing that. Um, I think I think it'll be interesting to see how the NFL adapts to it. But I, I like the kickoff rule. Uh, I want I want more kickoffs. And, obviously, as much as it helps the Packers, because, you know, we got Keyshawn Nixon, it's going to hurt the Packers, too, when someone else has got someone back there. You know what I mean? you got to be able to cover this thing, and they have to learn to cover it, and they got to learn to cover it quick. And I'm assuming a lot of teams are going to be 
that's what training camp's going to be a lot uh is this new kickoff rule because like it's brand new and like you know special teams ain't used to it like they have to get a adapt to that thing but um I, i'm excited about the kickoff rule the hip drop tackle horrible I, I feel like that is a horrible horrible rule here we go let's keep her moving over here joe drab joe drab bro that's a cool name is that real is that a real name and i'm not i'm not making funny at all that that joe drab feels like like a like a 60s detective you know what i mean maybe even a mobster i'm, not, I'm watching sopranos right now I'm on season six. I've already watched this. So it's like my fifth, fourth, third time going through it. I don't know. But uh, Joe Drab, that's a cool name. Anyway, shout out to Joe. Uh, he said, I uh, need to take down a load of glaciers and spot a cow to Brazil with them. <laughs> For real, bro. Bring Wisconsin to Brazil. Let's get some glazers. Let's get some spotted cow. All you got to do, Packers, you know, you take a bus probably to the airport. Swing by a quick trip. Get yourself some glazers. Get some spotted cow. Go down there with style, you know what I mean? Go down there, keep the players happy, you know what I mean? I know Preston Smith, Jordan Love, sit around, drinking some spotted, putting down glazers, you know what I mean? They're having a good time. Here we go. Sideline reports that the Bears fan base has a package notifications on social media. Dude, they have to, bro. Bears, dude. Oh, man, I, I swear, I could just rant for like an hour about the Bears. And not and about the Bears, but they're fans. That's what I don't get is like all this like, all you talk about is the Bears. But, like, dude, I get tagged, like, every hour on some social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, and some stupid Bears fan post. Caleb Williams is going to be the best quarterback in the league this year. Yeah, I heard that about Justin Fields. I heard that about Trubisky. And people say, no, you didn't. Yes, I did. I got screenshots, bro. People say, no, you don't, about uh, Mitch Trubisky. No one ever said that. Yes, they did. Bears fans said that. Credible, like, Twitter accounts. Not one say credible, but, like, Twitter accounts a lot of following. Very engaging, very post every day for a lot of years. It's not trolls. So like, don't tell me because I if you, if you don't believe me, I'll I'll show the receipts. I got them. I got a folder on my phone, bro. <laughs> what do you think I'm doing over here? You know what I mean? All right, we got a Bears fan about to comment right here. Y'all ready? This is one of my bigger, uh, my, my longest Bear fan trolls that, that I've had. This Penny Rogers. All right, has been a troll on my page for years, and um. She's good at it. You know what I mean? She gets the attention. Packer fans get riled up. You know how Packer fans be? Easily triggered. You know what I mean? But let's get this comment. It's going to be a good one. Penny says, damn shame the Packers have to travel over 4,000 miles just to get the L and start the season 0-1 while questioning yourself why the Packers passed over hurt for love. LOL. All right. <laughs> All right. That's great. You know, it's funny because I've seen this comment before Like, because Penny she has a good thought. She uh copy and paste that thing, you know what I mean? Make sure to put on a couple posts. But uh, dude, as far as like passing uh, over Hurt for love, I, I'm not gonna bash on Jalen Hurts. Um, I think Jalen Hurts is he 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 proved to be a better quarterback than I thought he would be. Like when he was first starting out, because he he got thrown there right away, whatnot. And um, I wasn't real impressed with him. I thought he was good, but I didn't think he was that great. But he 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 could turn it on. So ain't no ain't no hate for Hurts. But uh, Jordan Love, I I think was the right pick for the Packers. Uh. Had a, he sat behind Aaron Rodgers? I'm all in on Jordan Love. I got no regrets. I'm glad the Packers drafted Jordan Love. I know a lot of people talk about Jordan Love, not the player, but like the draft pick. But like, yeah, they could have got a receiver, then they would have won a Super Bowl. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard because the Packers, with Aaron Rodgers' career, like they had good teams. You know what I mean? It it it, it, it takes more than a good team to win a Super Bowl. Like people act like if they didn't draft Jordan Love. They would have drafted a receiver, would have drafted this person or that person. The Packers are guaranteed a Super Bowl win. It's not the case. Dude, the Packer fans, we should know that more than anybody. I don't know how this is a confusion. Packer fans should know more than anyone. You could have a great team. 2011 Green Bay Packers, 15-1, and one, didn't win a playoff game, bro. And the, the, this isn't a knock on anyone on the team, the coaching staff, whatever. It's just like, dude, the winning in the NFL, winning a Super Bowl, it comes down to a little bit of luck. Be really good and get lucky a little bit. Get balls bounce your way. The refs, you know, like you that day. Things happen. Um, but, like, it, it hasn't happened for the Packers. Packers have been getting to the playoffs, but, like, they have bad luck when they get there, especially the 49ers on their side. I ain't going to lie. Uh, they just have bad luck. And, and that ain't no excuse. I'm not blaming the refs. I'm not blaming whatever. But that's just what the NFL is. Like, dude, it doesn't matter how good you think your team is. It's like, dude, 
you need a little bit of things to come your way, get hot, whatever the case may be. But like it hasn't happened for the Packers. But I'm excited because, dude, I don't care about like what happened in the past. People talking about the 49ers, whatever. I do not care about the past because everyone always talks about the Packers fans loving the past. But y'all talking about the past. Aaron Rodgers is not the Packers quarterback no more. We have a new defensive coordinator. A lot of new things on this team. A lot of rookie wide receivers are not rookies anymore. They're going to be second year wide receivers, a lot of second year tight ends. This uh, whole uh, Packers offense is going to look, uh, I think, insanely better. I'm excited about this Packers team. I don't even know what what question I was responding anymore, but I'm just going on a little rant. I wouldn't say rant, a little rambling. You know what I mean? What's up, Elliot? He says new player. The Packers signed. Oh yeah, they they did just sign. Was it a tight end? I did. I didn't see. I kind of just saw it as I was jumping on the live, but um, I saw it earlier. But I didn't really pay attention to it. Um, but uh, yeah, the Packers did just sign a new player. If anyone has information on that, throw it up there, and I'll talk about it. But uh, I don't have it with me right here. Uh, Stacy says, hey, Matt, hope all is good. September 6th, go Paco. You know what I'm saying? Also, I want to give a, I want to talk real quick before we get to the rest of the comments. Um, I'm at 94,700 some followers on Facebook. When I get to 95,000, I'm going to do a, a giveaway, a hoodie, or I'll give away anything from my store. Whoever wins the giveaway can just pick anything from my store, hoodie, shirt, beer, glass, whatever. And uh, hook that up. And then when I hit 100,000 followers on Facebook, which is only 5,000 more, I, I know you know how to do math too. <laughs> but uh, then I'll, I'll, I'm going to give away a, uh, a Packers jersey from the Packers Pro Shop. When I hit 100,000 on Facebook, which is like 6,000 from now, less than that, I'm um, giving away a, you know any jersey you want from the Packers Pro Shop that's available online. And uh, I'll hook that up for you. And then just a couple, 300 followers away, I'll be giving away a hoodie, whatever you want, beer glass. All the good stuff. But uh, be sure to follow me on Facebook if you're not. And you're watching, you know, YouTube, wherever you're doing. But I uh, appreciate that. All right, here we go. Let's keep it moving. Jesse says, Packers, 53 and Eagles, 10. We will dominate the season. <laughs> go back. Go. I, I, dude, I, I, I absolutely believe the Packers are going to dominate that game. You know, 53 and 10, that's kind of a <laughs> – that, that's a wild take. And I appreciate that because that's my kind of take. You know what I mean? But uh, I think the Packers are going to come out swinging, dude. Packers are feeling confident. Packers are feeling good. Uh, the, the offense one year more in the training camp. I think training camp is going to be huge for the Packers this season. Um, dude, I, I'm excited about this team, and I absolutely think that they're going to win. I, and I do think that, that they're going to win big. I don't know about 53 to 10. If it is that, Jesse, that's a wild prediction. You know what I mean? But uh, all right, he okay. So that we got ourselves a new DB. Elliot says, um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure who it is. Like I say, because I, I I barely saw it as I was preparing for this, and by preparing for this, I mean drinking. <laughs> you know what I mean? <clears throat> but um we'll see. I don't know a lot about him, so I don't want to talk about him quite yet and uh or anything about him. I don't even know his name. But um yeah, I think that they're gonna have a lot of additions before training camp. They're gonna bring some people in. I don't know if that's a uh a, a huge signing or if that's uh you know kind of a training camp signing or whatnot. Uh we'll see. I don't even know who it is yet. Uh Alexis says go pack go from Claremont, Florida, Florida in the building, Alexis. I'm glad you didn't get eaten by a gator. Whenever I think of Florida, I think of Gators. I don't know. Maybe it's just my ignorance in Wisconsin. You know what I mean? But uh, big shot to Florida. <laughs> All right. Penny's back in the building. Let's see what she has to say. Uh, she says, you say that other teams still talk about Rodgers and he doesn't play for Green Bay anymore, yet you continue to talk about Fields Trubisky. Dude, I don't talk about Fields Trubisky unless I'm responding to what Bears fans are saying. Who's talking about Trubisky, bro? I mean, I talked about it before because, like, Bears fans did anoint him. King of the North. I got the links. So like, that, that's the thing with Penny. I think she might be a bot. I'm not sure. This is AI or not. You know what I mean? Because she'd just be talking gibberish. You know what I mean? But um, I, I don't care about uh, other fan bases talking about Rodgers anyways. I think it's funny because people always say that. They'll, like, they'll message me or comment on something and they'll like, trash Rodgers. Like, yeah, he plays for the Jets. I don't care. And I really don't care anyways what people say about other players, even if I, you know, and I like Rodgers. I've always been a Rodgers fan. I'll always be a Rodgers fan. When he's done with New York, he's going to come back to the Packers. They're going to put his name up in the Raptors and put his jersey up there and retire his number. They're going to do all the things. He's going to come back in big games, and uh, they're going to, you know, the crowd is going to cheer. It's going to go crazy. Like, I, I have no hate for Rodgers. Um, but, like, uh, I don't care about people talking about him. <laughs> Like, I, I'm not that sensitive, I guess. Even people like Bears fans, when they like rip on Jordan Love or whatever player I like, Preston Smith gets it a lot because people know I like him. I just don't care because, like, your opinion doesn't matter. Like, you're a Bears fan. 
Like, what do I care about your opinion on the Packers roster? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I just don't care. Why? You don't know it. You don't even know the roster. You know the, the star players. Uh, Alexis says, uh, Bra- uh, Brazilians have a lot of Packer fans. They really do. And I know this from the internet. Uh, Brazil, they got a lot of Packer fans. Um, even before, because I, I saw, like, everyone celebrating. I saw videos and whatnot. Um, but even before that, I, I knew that because uh, I got people following me on different platforms from all over the world, like Germany and like, you know, UK, uh, Bra- Brazil. I don't even know. I'm not a geographer. I couldn't even point Brazil on the map. I ain't got to lie to you. But all love, you know what I mean? All love. But I'm just not smart. <laughs> That's all that is. Uh, Gaman Green. I'm not sure uh, what we're talking about here, though. Elliot. I'm a little confused. I've been drinking. Uh, I know they will. All right. I think you're talking about what I was talking about earlier. There you go. Appreciate you watching. All right. So, like Cody says, any news on Justin Simmons? No, I really haven't heard anything today. I mean, I, 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 I've been kind of like, I was on social media a little bit, but I didn't really see anything about anything today because uh, I worked and then I was doing stuff. My wife's birthday was yesterday. That's why I didn't go live yesterday. I probably won't. I won't be live tomorrow either because we're doing a birthday dinner for my wife with my sons and all that. It's going to be like a little family thing. But yeah, I haven't heard anything really about anything today. Uh, but here we go. Okay, we got Penny Rogers. She's still chiming in. You say that other team... All right, so I, I think... I think. See, I told you about copy and paste. <laughs> it's the same questions. It's the same comment. Uh, shout out to my daughter-in-law, Emily. All right, this is from Stacy. Happy birthday. I'm sure they will be out your way this coming season. Actually, I did send her a message. Happy birthday. You know what I mean? Uh, I know she's a party animal. I know they got down. You know what I mean? Uh, I know they had a good time. <laughs> That's for sure. All right. The the Lambo Lounge. They signed DB. Uh, okay. That's the name. All right. I'm just stupid. Uh, is it Jamon Green? That Because I, I thought it almost looked like Amon Green. Like it was like a typo. You know, I wasn't sure. But um, they... So the Packers signed DB Jamon Green. I don't know anything about him, um, how good he is or how, what's what. I'll figure that out, and uh, we'll talk about that. Talk about that next time on here. But um, yeah, I think that they're gonna probably have bring a lot of people in uh, for training camp and like see what's what. But uh, I think it'll be interesting. I think it, I think this training camp's gonna be really fun. It's gonna be good. Uh, what's up, Dean? How you doing today? Uh, yeah, the, Elliot said that the DB the Packers signed was Jamon Green. I got you. I got you. I'm just stupid, Elliot. I appreciate it. Uh, Jesse says Christian Watson will be wide receiver one for us. Play plus if uh, he can stay healthy, I can see Watson leading the league in yards and touch. Oh, let's go! Let's go, Jesse. I like that. High predictions. You know what I mean? We don't come in subtly. We don't just tap on the door. No, kick that thing down. No, I think Christian Watson's an absolute baller. I think in 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 the Packers' offense, wide receiver one, I'm not sure it like even exists because I feel like they're all going to be going after it. But Christian Watson is supposed to be that dude, right? And I've been saying it. You know, a lot of people have been killing me because they're like, "Oh, he's hurt. Like he can help that." But uh, I think Christian Watson healthy. You know, it, it, you know, hopefully he can stay healthy this season. He is a huge threat. Um, and not even that because when your wide receiver is gone, everyone's got to kind of move up. You know what I mean? And then, but like when he's there. It really puts pressure on that back end secondary, right? That, that that number two corner, that number three corner, number four corner. Like, you know, they the better the wide receivers you have, the more pressure you put on that defense. So Christian Watson being in there is huge. I think he's fast. He's good. I think he's legit. He's going to prove people because people have been talking some trash on his name. His mama out there <laughs> bringing it right back to you. I think his dad out there too. I, I, I don't understand people arguing with people's family members about a player i would never do that even if a player's parent came you know attacked me on twitter i would just ignore it or just respectfully bow out because i'm not gonna be arguing with someone's mom first of all anyone's mom ever that's just not what i do but i see packer fans doing it y'all crazy but uh, <laughs> here we go cody says what's your thoughts about people talking about jacobs being a bus in green bay i think that is probably one of the stupidest things i've ever heard you know what that is People who say Josh Jacobs will be a bust in Green Bay are people who are butthurt Aaron Jones is gone. And I love Aaron Jones. And I was devastated. Like, when he got released, like, I was shocked. I didn't understand it. I still am processing it. Matt LaFleur, too, said the same thing. Like, I think Matt LaFleur, I, th- I thought I saw a quote where he said he cried. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember if that's true. I might have been sleeping. 
I might have been dreaming. But um, yeah, but like Aaron Jones was like huge. And I love Aaron Jones. I, I think Aaron Jones is gonna be a Packer forever. You know, when uh when, when he's done with the Vikings, I feel like the same thing. He's gonna be going on these tailgate tours too. And Aaron Jones will be loved in Green Bay forever. But like, don't just because you love Aaron Jones, don't don't trash on you know Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs is a really good running back. He's a really good running back. The Packers have a really good running back. He's a young running back. He's in his prime or just about to touch his prime. And, like, dude, like, it, it's okay. It's okay. Like, Aaron Jones is a Viking. He's going to have a good time in Minnesota. Viking players seem to like it in Minnesota. They're rated, like, number one in, like, the uh, player poll and all that. So, like, uh, you know, much love to Aaron Jones. Wishing all the best of luck. You know, I don't want him to win games <laughs> in Minnesota. I ain't going to lie. But I want him to have a good career, good, healthy career, and, like, ball out and do all the things he wants to do. Aaron Jones is a good dude. Like, I don't know. You can't talk bad about him. But, like, you don't have to drag uh, Josh Jacobs just because of it, because you're mad about uh, the Aaron Jones situation. You know what I mean? Like, I, uh, to me, that's corny. I, do, I won't do it. I'm all on, on Josh Jacobs, but uh, I'll love the Aaron Jones, too. You know what I mean? All right, let's get to the next one over here. Uh, Alexis says, Jaden Reed, number one. I like Jaden Reed. I don't know if he's number one wide receiver. Like I said, I don't think the Packers really have a number one wide receiver, but I think Jaden Reed is a number one wide receiver. Like, he's capable. Like, he's really good. Jane Reed is really good. He's a really good wide receiver. And in this in, in year two, I'm like so excited to see what this dude's gonna do. Jaden Reed, bro. I got his jersey. Uh my wife bought it for me. You know what I mean? One of those I, it, it, it's like the only green jersey I have, you know, those green throwbacks they got. Uh Cody said, Oh, and did you hear about there's trade rumors for Watson? Seeing today. I don't think the Packers are gonna trade Watson at all. I don't think that unless someone like way like through a you know kind of like Godfather, I met him in offer he couldn't refuse. I don't know, <laughs> I'm not real good at impressions, <laughs> but like it was something like you know something that 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 they couldn't refuse. But otherwise, I think Christian Watson is a is a Packers wide receiver, and I don't think they're going to bring anyone else in either. I don't think that they're, they're they're not bringing in no veteran. I feel like they're really good with the wide receivers that that they have, and uh, Christian Watson is one of those dudes. You know, he's that dude. Uh, we'll see what happens, but I don't think I don't think he's going to get traded. I don't think that they'll even entertain it, really. Uh, Doubt to man. I'm not sure what you mean there, bud. Uh, let's keep her moving over here. We got sideline report. It says Jake Bates is a field goal kicker for the Michigan Panthers of the UFL. He made a 64-yard field goal and a 62-yard field goal. Green Bay should bring him to compete with Anders Carlson. I'm all with it. I think they should have 17 kickers out there. I'm telling you, they should have 17 kickers. Kicking field goals all through training camp. Just uh, they should put them, you know, like the Packers uh, practice on Ray Nitschke field, but they have that other side. Uh, I think that's Clark Henkel field on the other side over there by uh, 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 whatever. What street that is? I can't think right now. But um, th that's what they should do and just have field kick field goals all day. Just kick, 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 kick until they find the best one that, that they can. Uh, they definitely should have a lot of competition in for uh, kicking field goals. You know what I mean? Uh, Silent Report also says, I'm still not over the 41-yard field goal Carlson missed versus the 49ers in the playoffs. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm with you. Like, I'm not saying, like, he sucks and, like, get rid of him and all this stuff. What I'm saying is, like, um, bring some dudes in. Like, try out some stuff. Let's get the best kicker. I'm, you know, I'm not loyal to him yet. <laughs> I mean, I, I'll love to him, and I hope he turns it around and he's a kicker for many years. But, like, if they can find someone better, do that. You know what I mean? They got to definitely be looking around. Uh, draft number 25 DB or offensive line. Huh. I mean, it depends who it is. I think I, I'm, I'm more like best available. Uh, depends like who is there, but I think offensive line needs a lot of help, especially at depth. Uh, DB could use some help to this in our secondary, but uh, I think whoever's the best that is still available at that position is what they should go for. You know what I mean? Uh, Jesse says, I think it's not fair that coach Matt LaFleur is never in the talking for coach of the year. I think he should have won in the last few years because he is better coached than the other coaches that are winning it. It's time that our coach deserves the award. He makes our team great. And I totally agree with you, Jesse. I totally agree with you. Matt LaFleur, as, uh, he's, he's done some phenomenal jobs because when, when Matt LaFleur first got to Green Bay, that's what it was. Oh, Aaron Rodgers is quarterback. I could coach the Packers. Da, 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 da. But then Jordan Love comes in, first year start, and he sucks, right? Everyone said it. He sucks. He's a bust. Everyone's on TV saying Jordan loves him. Anytime he threw a bad throw, oh, I just told you this guy's terrible. 
But then they they they, they turn around. Jordan Love, four thousand yards. You know he's got the numbers. He's I think over thirty touchdowns. Uh, he was leading the league in touchdowns at one point or whatever. I don't know where he ended up, whatever. But he was in the top part of that, right? And uh, still, no, uh, no, no, no coach of the year for Matt Lafleur. And not even that Matt Lafleur should have been the coach of the year because, like, I, obviously I'm biased, but like he should be higher up. Like he should be talked about more. Matt Lafleur does a great job. I think this year when the Packers ball out and they win the Super Bowl, because that's going to happen, I think uh, Matt Lafleur will get more recognition you know what i mean 17 bro i ain't lie i ain't lie 17 kickers bring him in cody says matt uh what sets a lambo brought from the rest or just having a brought at lambo as tradition goes um i don't know like i'm not a big brought guy to be honest like i put them down every now and again but um i did not i know it's made me look soft but i like hot dogs you know fit better you don't know gun hole you know what i mean Right in the old mouthpiece. Uh, <laughs> uh, brats, uh, but yeah, but brats at Lambo, everyone loves them. If you go around Lambo Field, tailgate, and all you've seen is brats. But, uh, dude, I ain't gonna lie. I know it makes me like it, it hurts my Wisconsin credit a little bit, but I'm more of a hot dog fella. You know what I mean? That's just me. Uh, we're gonna get to a couple more comments and then I'm gonna do a, do a little review on this Barron's old fashioned uh, brandy, Charlie Barron's, you know, Wisconsin. Wisconsin legend, Wisconsin God, whatever you want to call him. Uh, we're gonna do a little review on this. Sadly reports I highly doubted Matt uh LaFleur be before Jordan Love uh started, not gonna lie. I I I really didn't. I mean, not to say like some of the play calling, some of the decision making, like there were some moments where it was like head scratch for Matt LaFleur, but um I've been giving Matt LaFleur the benefit of the doubt. I like him. I like that young coach that um I feel like he hung on, you know. The, some coaches but i feel like every coach does that they don't want to fire their homies you know what i mean uh mike mccarthy did the same thing um i feel like a lot of coaches do that um but it's a new year you know we got a new defensive coordinator but uh yeah i definitely think he should have moved on a little bit quicker but i get it it's your guy you don't want to be firing people out here uh stacy said i need to throw this out there not full related but please 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 if you watch american idol vote for number 11 Will Mosley, he's my neighbor here in uh, Hazelhurst, Georgia. Thanks. All right, all right. Stacey, give a little shout out. Everyone who watches American Idol, vote for Will. You know what I mean? There we go. Uh, Elliot said, let them play again. No expectations and and go when uh, and go win. All right, I think that you're trying to say there. Hey, you guys can't have typos when I'm drinking. <laughs> I can't figure them out. Jesse said, Lambo Field cheese curds are amazing. I'm not sure I've ever had it. I'm not a big cheese curd guy either. I ain't got no idea. All right, we're going we're gonna to test out this uh, Charlie Barron's uh, uh, brandy. All right, we're going to take a little quick swig of it. All right, so before we get into this, all right, we are going to be uh, trying out Barron's old-fashioned brandy. Let me read the back of it real quick so everyone can see what Charlie Barron's is talking to you. Uh, it said, uh, make it Barron's. Naming a brandy after yourself is egotistical. That's why I named Barron's Old Fashioned Brandy after my Grandpa Bob. I can't help if we got the same last name. Grandpa Bob is the most Wisconsin guy I've ever met, and this is the most Wisconsin brandy we could make. Barron's Old Fashioned Brandy is made from the best grapes in the U.S., and just like me and Grandpa, it's aged in Wisconsin, pairs well with cheese, fishing, weddings, funerals, Deer Camp and podcasts, of course. <laughs> I added that podcast part in there. You know what I mean? Uh, but anyways, yeah, th this is uh, th this is for Grandpa Bob up there in heaven, cheering back and waiting for his cut. Make Grandpa proud. Make it a Barons. I, I absolutely love that that Charlie Barons incorporates. Doesn't forget his grandpa. Um, and it, dude, I grew up like, until I was like twelve in Fond du Lac, kind of close to Milwaukee. Um, and I remember everyone like you know talk about Charlie Barons, like the stuff he says like in his videos, like uh, tell your folks is that hi. Like, I, I heard that so much, like, growing up. And, and, you know, you're playing in the yard, you know, someone, your parents, friends, or whatever, the neighbor, they talk to you a little bit. Hey, tell your folks I said hi or whatever. Tell your parents I said hi. In some way or another, like, Charlie Barron's is absolutely killing it. Anyway, slight strength. I don't know why I'm rambling. Uh, I'm going to take a, you know, not a lot. Just Let's just get a little taste. Let's get a little taste over here. I've never done, like, you know, I, I, I know, like, real beer reviewers, you know, like, real alcohol reviewers. And like they all like, mm, smells like 
you know, and they do a little bit of that, you know, kind of bring it into the nose. They kind of say stuff that's smart. I don't have any of that. I'm not really a brandy drink either. That's why I wasn't sure I wanted to uh, actually do this because I haven't drank brandy in a lot of years. I want to, I want to put that up there, make sure everyone can see that. But uh, I've been drinking brandy in a lot of years. Like back in the day, in my youth, we drank a lot of Kessler. We drank a lot of tequila. Uh, we, <laughs> we we just drank stuff that was cheap. Right? We didn't drink good tequila. We drank like Juarez. You ever drink that? Nine ninety seven. Back in my uh, high school days, or I mean, when I turned 21. You know what I mean? All right, so let's test this out. I'll let you know what it is. I'm not a brandy drinker, but uh, we're going to try it out. That's actually pretty good. Like, it's smooth, but it's got a little bit of a uh, let you know what you're drinking. You know what I mean? But um, I think it's pretty good. I'm not a brandy drinker, though. But I might be after this, you know what I mean? Because I feel like if you drink brandy, you know, you got yourself one of these glasses over here. Even if you're an alcoholic, you look kind of classy. You know what I mean? You look kind of classy. You know, throwing down some Charlie Barons, you know. But, like, if, if you're drinking, like, some stuff in a paper bag, like some malt liquor, even some Coors Light or Bush Light, that's alcoholism. Put yourself, get a glass, get some Charlie Barons brandy, class up the joint, you know what I mean? But uh, big shout out to Charlie Barons. This is not paid either. I'm not being paid for this. Uh, I just want to test it out. Charlie Barron is absolutely the, the king of Wisconsin. Um, There we go. But I, I I think it's pretty good. I'll probably drink some more of that tonight. I ain't going to lie. I'm off tomorrow. <laughs> uh, What is your uh, favorite new glare? Is that Spotted Cow? Most definitely. Uh, I, I do like me some Spotted Cow. I think it's one of the better beers. I know people are like, it's overrated and this and this and that. But, like, dude, it, it's beer. Like, I think people have so much fascination with beer. Like, they try to class it up too much. Like, dude, I don't care. If it tastes good, I'm going to drink it. Like, I drink Coors Light. I'll drink Coors Light. I'll drink Spotted Cow. I'll drink most things. But um, as long as it makes it feel, <laughs> as long as it doesn't come out the other end tomorrow, you know what I mean? A little rough. Then I got to shut that thing down. But so far, so good. You know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, Spotted Cow, definitely. I think it gave you too much information there. Uh, uh, Paul said, brats are better than hot dogs. Just my opinion. Yeah, and I think most people's opinion is that. And I'm not against brats. Like, I'll eat a brat. I just, you know, I'd rather, you know, I'm just kind of a hot dog guy. I don't know. I think it makes me a pansy. I'm aware of the situation. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, Cody says, Jesse, how was 1919 at re restaurant? This isn't for me, but I'm going to answer it anyways. 1919 restaurant is actually a really good spot. Um, I think it's fun. They got, um, they got like, an eating area. They got a bar. It's right outside the package atrium. There's a good scenic view. Nice, clean bathrooms. That's what I care about. The older I get, you know, you start caring about that stuff. But um, I think 1919 is pretty legit. I, that's where I go, like, when I meet people, like, if I'm for content or, like, I wouldn't say business, but, like, I meet someone, like, you know, and I don't want to meet them in, like, some dark alley because I don't know about social media. Like, let's go to 1919, you know what I mean? Uh, so that that's kind of what I do. 1919 is legit. You should go live with Charlie Barron. Actually, I'm trying. I'm going to try to get Charlie on the podcast. Because, um, and I don't know if we'll do it live or not. We'll figure it out if the time works. Um, but uh, I'd like to talk to him about the brandy, talk to him about, but I'd like to talk to Charlie Barron's about like how he started. Cause like his work ethic is stupid. I saw he just did a podcast and like one of the quotes was like he worked 100 hours a week. He does stand up, he goes on tours, he does content every single day. Like this dude is just nonstop. He's got brandy, he's got his own beer, he's got, he's got everything. Like Charlie Barron's and nothing was handed to him. He he worked for all that. Like his work ethic is just stupid. It's so good. Uh, I would like to talk to him for sure. <laughs> just like to learn stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? I want to get there. Uh, Andrew said Wisconsin's second uh, goat next to Jonathan Taylor. We're talking about Charlie Barron's? Oh, yeah, he, he's definitely the goat out here. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> right, excuse me. I apologize for that. People listen to our podcast. Are you going to the game in Brazil? I looked at flights earlier, and they are 1,100, so that's a uh, no for me. I'm not going to go. I didn't look at flights. You know, I, first of all, I've never been on an airplane. Never been on an airplane. People talk to me, are you going to Brazil, bro? I barely leave Wisconsin. I go to Michigan. They got a Kmart over there. You know, <laughs> They got other stuff over there. They got some stuff over there in uh, Michigan. But um, I don't really leave the state too much. I think the only – I left – I was in Michigan and like barely, like, you know, like 20 feet. And uh, Minnesota was there at a soccer tournament when I was in high school, middle school, wherever it was. Um, and otherwise, I never really left. I never left, you know, Wisconsin. And when I was in Minnesota, we like, we were off the highway. I didn't like, I wasn't in Minnesota. 
We almost died on the highway, though. My brother doesn't know how to drive. Or he didn't then. He probably learned by now. But, um, yeah, I, I'm not going to Brazil. I would, you know, but I don't know about airplanes. My sister got married in Costa Rica. We we're going to go to that. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. You know, airplanes. I don't know. Plus, people stand up right when it lands, and that's what threw me off. I was like, whoa. <laughs> you know, it's funny because you see all those memes, people stand up right when the airplane lands. Never been on an airplane. You still get irritated. Like, yeah, that's stupid. What are they doing? <laughs> uh, Andrew said, Charlie Barron is Wisconsin's second goat next to Jonathan Taylor. Oh, I think you already said that. But um, actually, I, I, I will say this about the Charlie Barron's uh, goat situation. Chris Farley is the goat of Wisconsin. And I think Charlie would probably agree with me. Um, and I would, I would think Charlie's right, right underneath him. But I think Chris Farley is the absolute goat. He's a legend. He's on my wall. He's right there, right? He's on my wall. Chris Farley is like, if he wouldn't have died, the things Chris Farley would have done are just ridiculous. He was so good. He was so funny. He was so, he just, uh, you know, had some problems. But I, it, it's sad to think about like uh, Chris Farley, you know, uh, life ending way too soon. He's an absolute goat. Uh, I, I think he's one of the funniest humans to ever live. Chris Farley is absolute everything. Anyways, let's move along. You know what I mean? <laughs> I like that. As I said, you know what I mean? <laughs> Doug comments. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, that's freaking, that hilarious, Doug. Uh, Andrew said, in his beer still being made, I thought it wasn't. I thought it was. I don't know. Um, it's that keep removing beer, right? Uh, I, I, I thought it was still being made. It might be seasonal. I know she said TV. They got Carry the G. That's seasonal. I know Ryan Rubel, my, my my good friend of mine, he's got his own Wisco style beer. Um, you know, I need to get my own beer, right? Everyone's got beer. I should get beer, right? I just need more followers, I think. <laughs> I think that's how it goes. <laughs> but uh yeah, shout out to everyone making beer. Andrew said, no argument there. Farley was amazing. He absolutely was. Yeah, he was an absolute legend. But uh, here we go. Donnie says, Adam Sandler's Chris Farley song is incredible. Love Chris. Yeah, it it, it really is. Like, uh, yeah. Adam, that video of him, like, talking about Chris Farley and singing that song, like, that, I don't know. It's awesome. I want to give a shout-out real quick right here. Richard S. Oliver. He says, Bear Down. He is a Bears fan over on Facebook. And um, I, to me, probably the best uh, troll fan that there is i don't know if he still makes videos he used to go live a lot i don't know if he still does i assume he does uh and he would just trash the packers kind of does the same thing i do in a different style but uh except i trash the bears he trashed the packers we should talk sometime richard um i remember one time i was gonna have a bear fan on bear fan was trolling me all the time he's like i'll come on your show and i'll ruin you and i don't like that bringing and uh the other team fan bases on my show because i'm not here to debate i'm having fun i'm chilling i'm not trying to like get mad i mean i don't get mad i'm not gonna be like cut someone out you know all that uh, screaming because you see these shows on the internet where people just scream at each other like that's not what i'm gonna do but like so there's a bear fan it's like i want to come on i want to talk to you and i'm like all right but let's just we'll keep it civil we'll talk we'll have a conversation i'm not gonna like try to embarrass you i'm not trying to one-up you just talk like what what your view and my view from different point of views but um he, he didn't show up <laughs> you know what i mean he didn't show i don't know he got scared bro but uh None was gonna happen. I'm not. I'm not gonna try to like make someone look bad on the live stream because they cheer for a different team. But we gotta talk a little bit of trash. But it goes both ways, you know, it in a fun way. Uh, Southern Report says Packers 38, Eagles 24. That's my prediction for Brazil. All right, Southern Report, you're getting a little ahead of me. All right, I'm gonna do that show next week when we talk about that score prediction because the way too early score predictions. But uh, let, let let let's think about that. 38, 24. I think that's probably pretty accurate. 38, 24, 35, 24, 35, 21. I think somewhere right in there is where it's going to be. I feel like the offense is going to pop for the Packers. Defense might struggle a little bit learning a new uh, scheme that first week. Might not be as smooth as they want it to be. Plus, coming back from Brazil, who knows, might be a little slumpy. But uh, I feel like the Packers are going to win that game. I feel like they're going to win it pretty convincingly. It's not going to be all that close. You know what I mean? Uh, Paul says, if as soon as... Finko going to take over for Mark Murphy? I don't think so. Um, maybe Russ Ball. Um, I don't know who it is, though. I don't even know who Susan Finko is. <laughs> you know what I mean? So no disrespect to her. I I, I, I don't know. I got a feeling Russ Ball. I don't even know. It'll be interesting to see who it is. It's going to be big news to find out who it is. I know it ain't going to be me. 
Uh, it, uh, Elliot says, see if Josh Jacobs and Xavier McKinney come on your show. I DM'd them. They didn't see it so far. <laughs> you know what I mean? They got me paid on my... But uh, I do have a feeling that I might have Preston Smith on my podcast some point this season if it works out. Um, I don't like to talk about, like, upcoming guests because if it doesn't work out, I want people to think, like, they're bad. Some of that schedule just don't happen. But um, hopefully at some point I get to talk to Preston Smith this offseason, talk about the new defensive corner, talk about um going to brazil talk about the stuff what he's doing this off season uh press smith has his own company hall of fame gaming everyone should check that out on social media hof gaming they uh they uh like sponsor gamers and like they have a lot of gaming stuff press smith is a big gamer plays a lot of call of duty i believe but uh richard s oliver says yeah that would be awesome i'll go on your show one day it's uh, all about football i love your show hey i appreciate it richard i think you do g- good stuff too and, uh, you know, I hate the Bears. I don't hate all Bear fans. They annoy me. I'll trash them. But I'm not, it's not personal. I'm not like, I'm not, it's not that serious. You know what I mean? So, so shout out to Oliver over here. You know, I think he'd be killing it over on the Facebook. Uh, keep removing logger update. According to beeradvocate.com, it's retired. Okay. I didn't know that. Keep removing uh, is retired. More room for me to have my own beer. You know what I mean? But uh, I thought that was pretty good beer. I had it before way back in the day and uh it's good stuff or it was good stuff apparently it's retired now but uh shout out to richard you know what i mean Let's talk to you later uh you this is a funny name you can't stop what's coming all right i feel like that's a serious name you know what i mean uh 35 13 packers versus the eagles defense is going to be fire this year i absolutely agree the defense is going to be legit this year i can see them starting off a little bit slower than what how they'll finish because going to Brazil and then new defense. You know, I don't think it's going to be a big stumble. I feel like the first two or three weeks, it could be some learning curves. You know what I mean? All right, we got ourselves. Oh, United Bates gifted five Matt Ramage memberships over on YouTube. Big shout out to United Bates. I appreciate that. You know, I don't get a lot of activity over on Facebook. I get excited when people, uh, people are nice. You know what I mean? United Bates, shout out to you. I appreciate you for surely. Uh, Steven says, go, yo, yo, Friday night football in September sounds fantastic. It really does. Friday night football in September, you throw a TV out in the backyard, you can probably watch that thing right there. You know what I mean? Got a lot over on the patio. It's going to be a good time. Uh, Sideline Report says, the NFL revised its uniform policy and will now allow teams to have a third helmet design starting in 2025. What other helmets would you want to see the Packers use? Honestly, I like the brown helmets. When they wear the throwback uniforms, right? Uh, they, they 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 always wanted to just wear that brown helmet. They're like, you can't do that. You got to wear the yellow helmet. Uh, so I'd like them to use that brown helmet when they wear those Acme Packer throwbacks, right? I, I know a lot of people like want to see the Packers like redesign their uniform and all that. I don't like that. I love history. I want the Packers to not change a thing on their current uniforms, but I'd like to see them uh, use a, a few of their throwbacks more often, maybe more than once a year, even. Um, like, I do on bad, you know what I mean? I, I use throwbacks all day long. But, um, yeah, I think the brown helmets would be cool with the Acme. Because they kind of, the brown helmets represent the, the leather helmet, right? For people who don't know. I think it's good, you know what I mean? Uh, Green Ranger, thank you, United Bates. You know what I mean? Big shout out to United Bates. We're having a good time. We're having a good time. Andrew says, who should the Packers take with their first round pick? Like, uh, that's a question I, I don't know the answer to. Because I don't, I don't watch college enough to, like, be smart enough to, to answer that question. But um, I think it's going to be interesting. Like Even like position-wise, like wh- where are they going to go? You know, like uh, I'd, like them to, I'd, I'd like to see them bring Rudy Ford back, honestly. Like talking about, like, I was in my head thinking about safety. Uh, Rudy Ford, I, 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 I like Rudy Ford. He's been on my podcast, nice dude. Uh, QBR, when being thrown against, is good. He got hurt. It sucked. But um, maybe, I don't know where they're going to go. Like the, the, they're going to go for a playmaker. I think it'll be interesting like to see who's there. Cause like trade, like you know, I, I feel like going best player available is like the best. Like if if they got, I don't care who it is, if someone's just hung out there, like you're like, whoa, that we think this guy's gonna be good, if, if, even though we might not need him. I feel like you go grab that dude. You know what I mean? Uh, Cody says, Matt, look up loves off season workouts and training. The look in his eyes, we for sure have a dog. You know what I mean? Yeah, I've been watching it. Uh, I'm on Instagram, like all the places that people will be posting that nonstop. And then Jordan Love. It's on video. <laughs> Put a camera in his face. It's gonna be on the Instagram and Twitter. But um, yeah, I think Jordan Love is dialed in. Uh, he's confident. 
not just dialed in because like he is what he is like he's good like he he is that dude and uh i feel like he's dialed in he's uh confident he's feeling good um everyone's pumping him up he's enjoying his off season it seems like he's going to his podcast having a good time but jordan love you come on my podcast we'll come on the matt ramage show jordan love to have you bro uh steven says maybe the old logo on the helmet i don't know i like that i, I like that brown representing that leather helmet you know what i mean but i i i'm not like whatever they do i'll be good with it i'm happy with it but that's just my uh point of view but um, let's get to a few more comments, and we're going to end this thing real quick. Uh, Silent Reports says, I would use the all-yellow helmet in Madden. No logo. It looked sweet. Yeah. I mean, I, I like it, but I would rather the all-brown helmet than all-yellow, to be honest, because that's what that, with the Acme uh, Packers uniform, and that's what it was, representing the leather helmet. But um, I do like that, too. But I do love the G. You know what I mean? The G is the G uh richard oliver so you're going to play the philadelphia eagles what's the score going to be at the end of the game i say 31 17 right now it'll change 13 times before I've, the packers play this game but we are going to wrap this thing up i think the packers win big in that thing though that that's all i'll say we are going to wrap this thing up everyone i appreciate y'all tuning in big shout out to quick trip sponsor in the show you know they're giving away uh uh, fried chicken for life so be sure to use your quick rewards app at uh quick trip especially when you're buying chicken but they got all stuff, type of stuff going on over there also nicolay law uh sponsor and uh sponsor me as well you know what i mean you get hurt car accident you got you don't want to play at those insurance companies be sure to check out nicolay law and also make shout out to charlie barons uh barons brandy charlie barons is taking over wisconsin he's doing big things and uh you know much love to charlie barons you know what i mean and uh go pack go people we are going to be out of here. I'll be back on Monday night, 7.30 p.m. Central Time. Be sure to tune in.